please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Uh, On to a CNBC TV 18 exclusive from the insurance space this one. We learn from sources that bank assurance is turning out to be a make or break factor in the IDBI Federal Life stake sale. Bank assurance means selling insurance products through banking channels. Yash Shen, who has been tracking the story very closely, joins us now with more details. Yash, tell us about the modalities. What is really holding back this deal? Well, before we speak about the modalities, let's just understand where the IDBI Federal Life deal stands at this point of time. We are given to understand that it's a close race between Aditya Birla Sun Life Insurance as well as Max Life Insurance to acquire 100% stake in IDBI Federal Life Insurance. Getting back to the modalities, there are important negotiations which are on between the buyer and the seller on the bank assurance front where the most important point is the time period for the bank assurance channel which will be provided. Here, of course, there are negotiations which are on whether it will be a 5-year bank assurance period or a 10-year bank assurance period. And of course, the potential buyers are seeking a 10-year bank assurance channel which will be provided by this particular entity. On the second important point, this is with respect to the exclusivity of the bank assurance channel provided uh, through the 3,000 branches of IDBI Bank as well as Federal Bank put together. Of course, IRDA regulations allow these banks to have an open architecture and have partnerships with three life, three general as well as three standalone health insurance branches to distribute their products through their bank branches. But here, the potential buyers are seeking an exclusive bank assurance partnership when it comes to distributing their products. Now, let's just put both these buyers and understand how important this bank assurance channel provided by IDBI Federal Life is to them. Uh, as far as Aditya Birla Sun Life is concerned, it distributes 50% of its total products through Bank Assurance Channel. It has partnerships with smaller banks like DCV Bank, Karur Vaishya Bank, Deutsche Bank. It also has a partnership with HDFC Bank, but that's not an exclusive partnership. So one can understand how uh, significantly the 3,000 branches of IDBI Bank and Federal Bank will add to the already strong bank assurance network which Aditya Birla Sun Life has. As far as Max Life is concerned, it has two strong bank assurance partnerships in the form of Axis Bank and Yes Bank. But do remember, the partnership with Axis Bank ends in 2021. So the vacuum which will get created by Axis Bank's exit will have to be filled in through these 3,000 branches of IDBI Bank and Federal Bank put together. All right, we leave it at that and bring Yash Chen back with more developments on that deal. But on to the latest in the NSE co-location case. Yesterday, the Central Bureau of Investigation filed an FIR in the matter. The CBI has booked unknown officials of the Securities and Exchange Board of India and the National Stock Exchange for taking bribes and manipulating the NSE trade systems to give unfair trading access to OPG securities. Utkarsh Chaturvedi is here to take us through these charges. Utkarsh, what has the CBI probe found in the matter so far? So we went through the FIR in the NSE co-location case and there are three important animals, elements in the FIR. First is the alleged role of SEBI officials. Now the FIR alleges that Sanjay Gupta influenced the officials of SEBI for which bribe money was given to some unknown officials to get a favourable report in the ongoing probe. Sanjay Gupta also directed his employees to delete important mails text messages, logs, etc. related to co-location controversy. One more name in the FIR is Ajay Shah. Now, the FIR alleges that Ajay Shah had been instrumental in exploitation of the NSC TBT, T by T, a stick by tick architecture and he collected the NSC trade data in the name of a research and then passed it on to develop an algo software named Chanakya through which the brokers were benefited by exploiting the TBT structure of the NSC. Lastly, Unknown officials of NSC gave OPG Securities Private Limited an access to servers which were technologically latest and least crowded at that particular period. He also managed the data center staff of NSC to allow OPG to use these backup servers and backup servers were with zero load and therefore had provided far better and fast access to the market feed. NSC till this point of time has nor denied or accepted any role of wrongdoings by the employees in this case. But the CBI FIR claiming a clear connivance of NSC officials does put the company in a dock. 
But more importantly, with SEBI's probe still ongoing in the co-location matter and the FIR now raising questions on the officials of SEBI with charges of being influenced by a bribe. Now this will question the authenticity of the report until and unless SEBI either explains its stand in this matter or makes some changes in the investigative committee.